Hi and hello there, people of the internet. It's me again, Raphael Rau. I recently did this survey where I ask you what tutorials you want and the majority of you have voted for a PBR workflow tutorial with Octane and Substance Designer as an extension of what I did with the podcast with Ash Torp. Now, unfortunately, this needs a little bit more time to do I need to set up my PBR material inside of Octane a little bit better. But before you go ahead without any tutorial, I thought about doing a triplanar tutorial or a quick tip rather. So since most of it is done within the material, let's just open our node tree here and let's put it down here so we can still see the rendering and let's use an image texture for the display. And I want to use a UV map for that. And my UV maps are down here. Let's use this one. And if I connect that to our object, you see nothing because the material isn't applied. So let's first apply the material to the sphere. And if you are new to Octane, let's just first explain the connection between the materials and Octane inside of Cinema 4D. So you have those tags here. And if you do not have a transform or projection on your node, everything you set here will be reflected in your material. So if I go ahead and set this to spherical, you can see that Octane is actually doing a spherical projection. So what might be important to know is that Cinema 4D is giving Octane always UV maps. So no matter what projection you're setting here, Cinema 4D is baking that down in a UV map and then transferring it to Octane. You can, or you might have seen that my projection is kind of messed up around here. And this has actually to do with the UVs that Cinema 4D isn't capable of producing stellar UVs for the top pole on the bottom pole of the spherical mapping. So if you have problems like that, it might be better to use a Octane projection. How to get an Octane projection? Just use the projection node and pipe it in here. Now you notice nothing has changed and this is because the projection node right now is set on an UV interpretation. That means that everything it gets from Cinema 4D will be just piped through to the material so nothing changes. But if you click that roll out, there's a couple more options to choose from. For example, a spherical projection. And if I do that, you see that you get much better spherical projection than with the UV workflow that's coming from Cinema 4D. Now, in most cases, the workflow coming from Cinema 4D is enough to get good mapping. But in some cases, you might want to switch it out for the Octane UV setup. So what we have established right now is as long as you don't have any projection or transform nodes plugged into the material, everything you can set in the tag will be interpreted as UV maps and then sent to Octane. And then of course being uh, used by every texture node you're having. So maybe you've spotted it before. So if I go in here, you can see that there's a triplanar projection in here. But if I do that, the material turns white. Now I would like to see a triplanar projection if you do that. Uh, but right now, as it is, it turns white. And the reason is that you need another node for doing the triplanar projection. And that's the triplanar node. So essentially what you're getting with the triplanar node is basically a box mapping. So it does the same as if I set this to box with the difference that you can blend the edges. Now, if you look closely here or not so closely, it's very visible. You can see that the edges switch the projection at an angle of 45 degrees. So we get a top projection until the polygons are aligned in an angle that is greater than 45 degrees. So then we get the projection from this side or from the other side, depending on what the orientation of the polygons are, of course. So let's see what the triplanar node is doing. So if I 
put that in my diffuse map, you can see nothing is happening because it doesn't have a connection to the texture. You can see that there is a lot of connections here. So let's try and put in the connection to the plus Y. And you can see that we now get a projection from the top. And this is the huge advantage for the triplanar projection because you can actually use what you have here. And maybe that was a bad decision because you can't see it because it's on the back side. But you can see that you can manage any side of the object individually. So normally the workflow you're doing is to just put in that one texture in any slot here that's available anyone but the transform. So you can have this. And now you're seeing it actually is doing the same thing as the box projection. And the reason why it's doing the same thing is that this is still set to box. So why not set it to triplanar? And now you can see the magic is happening. So now you can see that the actually the blending between the edges is happening. And then you can set the blending angle to a higher value if you want to have a longer blending period with the angles. So in 90% of the cases, this is what you do and this is what should be giving you a satisfying result. So of course you're not taking a UV map like I did, but maybe taking a other map like for example the dirt map that I always use. And this is that one. So you can see that it doesn't tile or it doesn't show up any edges. So let's just real quick set this back to box and you can see that there are some very visible edges here. So this is the way, sorry, wrong projection, triplanar. This is the way to get rid of any boundaries that might occur in your textures. So if you're not the kind of basic guy, but want to do some more advanced stuff, you can do that also. And therefore the triplanar node with all the inputs is good for. So for example, if you want to simulate dust that's only visible from top, you can just detach any node here but the Y plus. And sometimes uh, Octane is not updating correctly, so just reload the object. And then you can see that we now have a look as if there's dust falling on the object from the top. Of course, you can use any other side, and again, update issue here, um, to attach any sort of texture in here. So as you can see, I brought in a different, a second texture. And now you can, for example, use that on Y plus. So we have a different texture on the top than on the side. And now I can, of course, fill all the other sides with the same texture. So we have the noise everywhere, but on the top, on the top, we have some blades. And this is very nice if you want to have a more advanced workflow. Now, this is not all you can do. If you say, okay, I want to have a different scaling here, you can plug in the transform node. And this giving, is giving you options to transform. So for example, you can rotate that texture here and even make it smaller maybe. So let's Maybe that was a bit too small, let's go with 0.5. You can see that our blades is now more tiled if we look on top. And of course, all of that is transferable to any other object. So if we go with a hmm, landscape, for example. Now with a landscape right now, you would see only the blade because it is uh, not showing up any uh, steep enough angles, but if you push the height a bit further, you can see now you get the blending. So you get the blades showing up whenever it is under 45 degrees, and then it's blending to the projection from the side. And so you can do anything. So if we don't want to use that one, um, 
You can also change the appearance, of course, by all the nodes that are available here. So if you just bring in a gradient and make this a lot lighter, you can see it almost looks like snow. So you can fake snow on your mountains that way, also all with a triplanar node. And of course, you can uh, just set the blending amount. So if you're not satisfied with the blending, you can just decrease it, for example, and have more detailed snow fields on there. So yeah, that's uh, all that I wanted to show you today with a triplanar node. I hope you can grasp the immense possibilities you have with that and uh, you have some nice cases where you can use it. Of course uh, I didn't mention one more thing and at least there's always one more thing according to Steve Jobs and this is the transform here so you can even go ahead and add another transform inside of the triplanar projection so you can rotate your angle. So if you want to have a snow covered hill that is only snow covered from the one side and not from the other, you can also do that. So with this triplanar mapping there is such an immense amount of possibilities opening up in Octane uh, that you haven't had before uh, without UV mapping and painting the snow layers for example. So hopefully you like that little insight into triplanar mapping and I hope I'll see you in another tutorial. Thank you for watching and goodbye.